विश्व चैतन्य प्रभु नित्यानंद श्री अद्वैत गदाधर श्रीवासादि गौर भक्त वृंद हरे कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे हरे हैव अ रिकॉर्डर यू हैव अ रिकॉर्डर बिकॉज इफ दिस डजंट वर्क देयर इज नो वन एल्स रिकॉर्ड Okay. So you've all heard these words before: Gyana and Vigyana. Gyana means knowledge. Vigyana is usually used in the sense of science. Here, Shila Prabha translates. these words uh, gana as knowledge of the material world and vigyana as knowledge of the spiritual world can anyone think of another verse in bhagavad gita where these words come they they come repeatedly any brahmins here vigyana and that's agyana Yeah, Brahmins should know this. It's supposed to be qualities of Brahmins. Yeah, Gana Vigyana Triptatma Kutastovi. There are so many places it comes in Bhagavad Gita. But these two words together, Gana and Vigyana. Vigyana is uh, usually even in modern Indian languages the word for, which in English is science is Vigyana, means special knowledge. literally means special knowledge. The Srila Prabhupada often said that Krishna consciousness is a science. You've often heard Srila Prabhupada say that, isn't it? It's a science. Now we may wonder why Srila Prabhupada always would say that. Krishna consciousness is a science. Why say it's a science? When we think of science, well we think of, uh, at least I think of, test tubes and Bunsen burners and prisms and calculus and all kinds of horrible things that you have to do at school and then chemical plants and people going to the moon and all this kind of thing this is called science so what's krishna consciousness got to do with all of that shila prabhupad said that krishna consciousness is a science when he said that he meant it in the intrinsic sense of the term that science means it's uh, methodical and that if you follow the method you should get the same result that's called science just like someone has a hypothesis and they test it experimentally and the same result should be able to be duplicated by someone else and that's called science that's why the, modern scientists they don't believe in uh they they, they don't believe in reincarnation it's very it's very difficult to uh, gather of course there has been evidence gathered but it's it's not so easy to gather evidence as it is for instance a uh, gross phenomena that we observe in the material world just like if you react an acid with an alkali then at the end you get a salt and water it's very basic chemistry so that's science that every time you do that you get the same result of course you get different salts depending on which acids and which alkalis you use but it's predictable so krishna consciousness is science because it's it's systematic if the process is followed then the result should be predictable of course we're dealing with consciousness we're dealing with uh, egos which is much more complex than chemicals so the more complex the science the more difficult it is to understand and the more qualified one has to be to practice that just like kids in school they can do some basic chemistry but you wouldn't want them to put them in charge of a petrochemical plant 
It requires a highly trained person to do that. Science, I mean, it's, it's there in everyday life, just like making chapatis. In this country, you don't make chapatis much. But bread, it's a science, isn't it? Who makes bread or chapatis? Anyone? So it's a science, isn't it? It's a simple thing, but if you don't do it the right way, then it doesn't work out properly. If you think that, well, bread, we have to mix flour and water, and the water is almost free, and the flour is not free, then why do, instead of you, what proportion? It depends on the flour. It would be approximately, uh, what, ten parts flour to one part water? It's a long time since I made chapatis. Anyway, and I don't. I never used to measure it. Actually, I just kind of by eye mix it. They were good chapatis too. But uh, if you think that well, instead of ten parts flour, I'll use ten parts water and one part flour. It'd be much cheaper. <laughs> but you won't get chapatis. You'll get some kind of gooey mix of like some kind of paste for water. Mostly water. So you can't cheat. Science means you have to follow the process exactly. So even uh, in, in day-to-day life, we, we, we have science. And then what to speak, like I was saying, a petrochemical plant or a distillery that I was just discussing the other day with Murari Gupta Prabhu. If you don't... In distilling alcohol for oral consumption, as is popular <laughs> among some people, not us here. But if it's not done on, at the right temperature and the right pressure, then instead of producing ethyl alcohol, we'll produce other alcohols like methyl alcohol, and then people drink it and they die, or they get blind. It has to be done at a very controlled temperature. And that's, that's also a very... Uh, that's a relatively simple process. And then you get to petrochemicals. Then it's very complex, because we're dealing with complex chemicals. And according to the uh, conditions in which they're treated, you get all different kinds of products, different kinds of nylons and polymers and plastics and fuels and all kinds of things. There's oil all over this room. We don't see it. And inside this, there's oil. Those paintings are oil. The upholstery of that seat is oil. Everywhere. Your glasses, that, that's also oil. Oil is everywhere. The watch strap, it's all produced for all different varieties of oil. But it requires an expert to... Uh, to treat the, to take it from crude oil to a watch strap. It, it requires the work of an expert. So, Krishna consciousness is a science, and uh, we're not dealing with chapatis, and we're not dealing with oil, we're dealing with much more complex, which is the, the senses, the mind, the intelligence. The ego, the soul, indriyani parani ahur, indriyabhya parang manaha, manasas tu parabudhe, yobudhe paratas tu saha. In Bhagavad Gita, Lord Krishna gives a summary of actual psychology. The one statement he makes, I just quoted the verse, that there are the senses, superior to that is the mind, superior to that is the intelligence, superior to that is the soul. But if we don't know this and we get it round the wrong way, as people do, then we take the senses to be most important. And the mind follows the senses. It's very dangerous. And then the intelligence follows the mind and the soul, they forgot it altogether. It's just the ego left. So, to get free from birth and death, we have to fix the mind on Krishna. But there's a science to do that because... Due to conditioning for many lifetimes, we are, we th it's almost natural, it seems natural for us to not be Krishna conscious, to follow the dictates of the senses. 
So it requires training and understanding to apply this science. One requires to be trained. It's not that one can, one can just uh, read a book and then uh, with a little theory one can become a petrochemical engineer. It requires a lot of training. And then even after theoretical training then one has to be uh, one has to be practically trained, or in medicine, one may be trained but, uh, in the theory, but then one has to be trained on the job. You just don't, don't start cutting up bodies. That You don't just open a medical book and read it for one or two hours and then propose to perform heart surgery or any kind of surgery. It requires training, because if you don't do it right, then things go very wrong. So Krishna Consciousness is also a science. Srila Prabhupada, in this purport, speaks of complete knowledge. He uses the phrase, at least in the English translation, complete knowledge, which Krishna states here in this verse. I will give you such knowledge by which everything will be known. It's a great claim, isn't it? Now how can you say it? It's, a, it's not such a big book. If you see this book, it's not such a big book. And actually, where's the... Here we are, just... Uh, just to make a scientific demonstration here. Oh, that's my... Yeah. Here's just the verses only in normal size type. It's much smaller. <laughs> without... So... It's not a very big book, but full knowledge is there. Full knowledge means uh, the knowledge that we require. Uh, here we won't find in Bhagavad Gita knowledge of how to treat oil. Or we won't find knowledge of how to make bread. But we'll find the full knowledge that we need as spirit souls, as, as, as we, as persons, to fulfill our lives. So that we don't need to work in a fa factory anymore. We can go to Krishna. But that requires complete knowledge. And all the knowledge in this world is incomplete. Whatever it may be, <coughs> just like uh, knowledge how to make bread. Okay, you make bread, you eat it, and then you pass stool, and the next day you make some more bread, and life goes on. Then you go to work in a chemical factory, and you come back, and you make some more bread, and... Like this, life goes on. So one may be expert in making bread and working in a factory, but one's knowledge is incomplete if one doesn't know the purpose of life. Parabhavas tavada abodhajata yavan jignasata atmata. One is defeated in the purpose of life. One is defeated in life as, one is long, as long as one does not inquire into what is the very nature of being. Who am I? So Arjuna wasn't even asking, who am I? But Krishna very kindly told him who he was. Arjuna mistook himself to be only a Kshatriya. But Krishna told him that beyond your material designation, you are my servant, Krishna's servant, spirit soul, eternal servant of Krishna. So this is complete knowledge. This is the knowledge that we need to know. Even in the Vedas, Veda means knowledge, but much of the knowledge in the Vedas is superficial to the real purpose of life. In the Shastra it said there are two kinds of knowledge, paravidya aparavidya, superior knowledge and inferior knowledge. And that's talking about in the Vedas. So much in the Vedas is tangential at best to... Tangential means not really to the point, to the side. It, it's, it's not really to the point. Bhagavad Gita is exactly to the point. Krishna, in Bhagavad Gita, Lord Krishna doesn't speak anything that is superficial to the real, the real subject that we need to know. Everyone of us needs to know. We should study Bhagavad Gita. Every verse is... Uh, required for our understanding. So, uh, 
even in the Vedas, there is, there is knowledge, so many different kinds of knowledge. Linguistic knowledge, Veda means knowledge, so all subjects are there, cosmology and biology, and engineering, all kinds of knowledge are there, art, science, literary, poesy, so many things. But Parabhavas Parabhavas Tavad Abhuda Jata Yavan Jigyasata Atmatapa. We should inquire into what is the nature of our being? What is reality? Here in this verse, Krishna says, Jnanam Vigyanam, knowledge of the material world, knowledge of the spiritual world. Everything is being given. The knowledge of the material world, uh, that's not there in detail in Bhagavad Gita, but the, the basics. What is the, what is this world? What are we doing here? Why are we in this dumpy place anyway? Why do we have to suffer birth, death, old age and disease? Why? Most people are so dull-headed, they don't even recognize that they're suffering. How dull can you be? You're being beaten by a stick, and you're so dull that you think, well, it's quite a, quite a nice stick. Quite a nice beating I'm getting here. So, so foolish. So Bhagavad Gita gives us the knowledge uh, by which we can fulfill ourselves to the actual, full extent of our being, by which we can come out of this suffering condition. One should desire to know the truth. What is the, what is the reality? The Bhagavad Gita speaks in, in Bhagavad Gita, Krishna gives this knowledge. We should desire to know this. This is human life. This is the meaning of human life. In the Shastra, it's stated, in the uh, Chandogya Upanishad, that is stated, that a human being, he should desire to know what is reality. Otherwise, one is, uh, what is the meaning of making bread, making watch straps, making anything? One should desire to know what is the meaning of life. So we may think, well, this is all very basic stuff, and we're all, all the devotees, we know all these things, but we may notice that Srila Prabhupada repeatedly spoke on these topics, even to his older disciples. Because, as I was saying, it, it, it seems almost natural for us to identify with this body. It seems almost natural for us to desire that which is not for our actual benefit. We desire sense gratification. We desire the tongue desires so many nice things to taste. The eyes want to see so many so many uh, objects which appear pleasing to us. In this way uh, we remain on the sensual platform and we don't achieve Krishna. Jiva lalose je iti uti dhai. Shishnodo parayan Krishna nahi pai. This one example Chaitanya Mahaprabhu gave that people who run here and there looking for something nice to eat, they may think, ah, today I got something very nice to eat. But they don't get Krishna. They become attached, they remain attached to their. Uh, tongue and belly, the, the whole purpose of their life is tongue and belly, and they don't get Krishna. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was, was warning his disciples. So we can imagine if Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is warning his followers, how much we need to hear these topics. How we have to remain focused on attaining Krishna. We should desire to know the truth. Krishna is the truth. Krishna repeatedly here in Bhagavad Gita establishes himself as the reality. Matav parataram nanyat kinchedasti dhananjaya. O dhananjaya, conqueror of wealth, Arjuna, there is no truth superior to me. No one is above me. Krishna is the goal of life. And the path to attain Krishna is bhakti. Bhaktya maam abhijanati. Everything is there in Bhagavad Gita. Krishna can be known 
by the process of bhakti. And bhakti is defined in, from various perspectives in various shastras. Sarvopadhivi nirmuktam tatparatvena nirmalam hrishikena hrishikesha sevanam bhaktir uchate. Bhakti, what is that? The definition is given by Narada being free from all mundane designations, being completely pure, and yabhilashita shunyam, without any other desire. When one's senses are engaged in the service of the master of the senses, that is called bhakti. Krishna centered, Krishna conscious. Srila Prabhupada coined this term, Krishna conscious. Krishna, what is that? Uh, Krishna bhavana, how is that verse called? Krishna bhakti rasa bhavitamati. This phrase, Srila Prabhupada translated as Krishna consciousness. Those who can follow a little Sanskrit, they can find so much in this. Krishna bhakti rasa bhavitamati. That one's, uh, one's consciousness is imbued with the emotional yeah it's it's easy to say krishna consciousness one's one's consciousness is imbued with the emotional flavor of the uh, feeling of devotional service to krishna krishna bhakti rasa bhavitamati or krishna consciousness simple simple word krishna consciousness so uh, the purpose of life is to be krishna conscious without any other desires and only that will completely satisfy the self as we find in, again basic teachings of the in Srimad bhagavatam Srimad bhagavatam begins where bhagavad gita leaves off krishna says surrender to me and bhagavatam immediately takes up the the point, what is that surrender to Krishna? Dharma Svanashtita Pumsa Vishvaksenakata. No, not this verse. Savai Pumsa. Paro Dharma. Yato Bhakti Adhoksache. Ahaituki Apratihata. Yayatma Suprasidati. The supreme Dharma for all beings is service, loving service to the transcendent Lord Krishna. And only such service, which is unmotivated and uninterrupted, can completely satisfy the self. So that is what we should aim for. Not, not to be content with anything else. We should look for happiness. Where is happiness? Full happiness. Complete. Not in this world. There's nothing in this world. Nothing of this world. For that we need vigyana. Vigyana here, Srila Prabhupada has translated as knowledge of the spiritual world. Nothing of this material world will satisfy us. We have to become Krishna conscious. Right? Krishna is the Supreme Lord. We are all His eternal servants. We should be uh, fully focused on that. If we don't focus on that, we're not going to get it. Because if we focus on anything else, then we're not following the science. The science of Krishna, the applied practical science of Krishna consciousness is the process by which we learn to always think of Krishna, be his devotee. Manmana bhavamad bhaktaha. And all other knowledge is superficial. Of course, as long as we're in this world, we have to operate within it. So we need some knowledge. How to make bread. It's a useful, useful knowledge in this world. How to... Of course, so many things we learn. We learn how to... Children, they gradually learn how to brush their own teeth and how to put on their own clothes and then everyone learns how to live in this world and some people are very learned compared to others some people are MSCs, PhDs, whatever you call it in your country but all knowledge without Krishna it's all a big zero it all comes to nothing Whatever it may be. Even the Vedic knowledge. In the Vedas there are so many 
different branches of knowledge, we can learn so many interesting things. For instance, by reading different Puranas. In the Garuda Purana, there's a systematic knowledge of all different kinds of ghosts, if anyone's interested in that. Different kinds of gems and the effects they have. So, some people are interested, that's why it's there, but devotees are interested in Krishna. So devotees should focus on Krishna. If we don't focus on Krishna, then we're not following the science properly. And I'm saying this because, guess what? Because we find in our glorious, Srila Prabhupada's glorious International Society for Krishna Consciousness in the present day, uh, many devotees, they seem to be fascinated by various topics which are not Krishna conscious. They might even be Vedic or semi-Vedic or imagined to be Vedic. Such as, for instance, Ayaved. Ayaved is very useful. The Lord's incarnation, Dhanvantari, has given that. But it's for living in this world so that we can get out of it. It's not a prime subject in itself. Astrology, another favorite. Amateur astrology. Uh, read a book or two and set yourself up as, as an astrologer. So that's also concerned with the world. It's Vedic knowledge, but Vedavyas, after compiling so much knowledge, he still felt dissatisfied because he had not presented Krishna. So there are so many topics. We, sometimes we see people walk into a festival or something, and they see a book table, so many books on astrology and Vastu and so many different things. But that's not our subject. That's there within the Vedic culture, but it's not our subject, Reiki or whatever it may be. All right, okay, it's there, it's part of the world, but it's not our subject. Our subject is Krishna consciousness. And although so many interesting things may be there, uh, and we may, we may find some fascination in them. Sometimes we find people, uh, they've been devotees, but nowadays they seem more interested in Vastu or astrology, or there are so many different things. What's the, you know, what's the latest thing, you know? What's the latest fashion or uh, some mundane academic studies or so many things. I mean, there's so many things that one can be interested in and they are kind of interesting and you can spend your life on the internet wandering around this uh, YouTube and finding all kinds of interesting things. And yeah, the material world can be very interesting and that's Maya. <laughs> that's what she does. She says, oh... This is very interesting. And we become fascinated. And at the end, we don't remember Krishna. So we have to be very careful, because if we don't follow the process properly, then we don't get Krishna. If we hear and chant about Krishna, then we can cultivate the habit of remembering Krishna. And if we don't, then we can end up with Krishna in the background. We find some devotees, they're more... I mean, they're supposed to be devotees, but they seem more interested in some of these other topics than in Krishna. And it comes to the extent where, so I'm told, you find some uh, people who are, were at one point initiated in Krishna conscious, they'll, they'll greet you with a glass of beer. What happened? That's not scientific Krishna consciousness. That's breaking the regulative principles. But they became fascinated by Maya. And they thought, well, seems much easier. It is much easier. It's much easier to be in Maya. So we may think also for preaching, let's, let's bring in some people will be interested. They're not interested in Krishna. They're interested in all that. And then gradually we'll bring them to Krishna. Well, I don't know. I mean, how many people have come to Krishna consciousness out of interest in Vastu? I don't know. I mean, in India, there's, you know, the whole place is full of Vastu and astrology, but it doesn't mean people... Are, to bring them to Krishna consciousness, you have to teach them what's in Bhagavad Gita. Otherwise, in India, it's, like I say, it's full of all demigods and mayavadis and 
vastu and astrology and gems and you know, all kinds of things. Le- levitating yogis. And, I mean, you don't see them on every street corner, but there are people with... There are so many ashrams, yoga. But uh, the whole culture is there, but it doesn't mean that people automatically become Krishna conscious. Not at all. Rather, they become more confused. Because there are so many people talking, so, so many swamis and yogis and gurus and Sri Shri's and all kinds of bogus people out there, that uh, people, they, they, they become confused and they don't know actually that the purpose of life is to surrender to Krishna. You have to go and preach to them and tell them. In Bhagavad Gita, Lord Krishna states, Sarvadhaman parityaja mame kam sharanam raja. Just surrender to me. Give up all these different things. Krishna doesn't say to be, become a Hindu. Either an Indian Hindu or a Croatian Hindu. He doesn't say. He says, surrender to me. Give up all these different things and surrender to me. So it's not that we're against all these things per se. They have their place. But their place is in the material world. So if we place them so prominently in our life that we don't give uh, full attention to Krishna, then our place remains, the material world. So we have to focus on Krishna, consciousness, as given by the uh, master scientist. Krishna himself is the master scientist. And he sends his accredited representatives, authorized representatives, like Srila Prabhupada, who is expert in the science of Krishna consciousness. And he teaches us how to follow the process of Krishna consciousness in such a way that we also can become Krishna conscious. Now you might notice that Srila Prabhupada, he always spoke the philosophy of Bhagavad Gita and Srimad Bhagavatam in a manner that was completely suitable for his uh, hearers to understand, adopt it in their life and become Krishna conscious. Srila Prabhupada didn't divert to various topics. Srila Prabhupada talked on many, many different topics. But very clearly, very centrally Krishna was there. Krishna wasn't hidden. That's the whole problem with material life. Krishna is everywhere, but he is hidden. Maya's job is to hide Krishna. And the devotee's job, the preacher's job, is to present. Here is Krishna. Here is what we are looking for. Life after life. What we didn't find in riding horses. What we didn't find in painting some pictures, what we didn't find in meat-eating, gambling, intoxication, illicit sex, what we didn't find in chemistry or making bread or anything, that is Krishna. That is who we are looking for, life after life. But devotees have to say this, not only to non-devotees, among ourselves also. We have to make it clear that our goal is Krishna. Otherwise, what... What immediately happens if we stop focusing clearly on Krishna is that we get deviated. We're not following the scientific process. So very clearly we have to be focused on Krishna. Just like in a chemical factory or a distillery, if you want to produce ethyl alcohol, you you have to know what you, you can produce by distilling the uh, fermented liquid in which you have alcohol maybe 15% and you want to get up to 50-60% alcohol. We have to know first of all which kind of alcohol you want to produce and then you have to set the conditions in such a way that you're going to make it. Or with oil, you, you, you start off with uh, crude oil and then you have to process it in a way that you're going to produce kerosene or gasoline or polymers or whatever. You have to follow the proper process. If you're not clear, then you'll you'll just be a big mess. You won't get 
what you want. So we have to be clear, very, very clear what is required. So, uh, Srila Prabhupada is the expert. He made it very clear that we require to know about Krishna. And what better way is there to know about Krishna than from Bhagavad Gita in which he himself presents himself. So everything should be centered on Krishna, very clearly. Now of course, there are various uh, things that one can do in an effort to bring people to Krishna. Uh, it's not that we, uh, everyone we meet, we immediately start quoting Sanskrit verses at them and tell them to immediately surrender to Krishna. Preaching means to contact people at their level of consciousness and awaken their interest and present Krishna consciousness to them in a way in which they can at least begin to accept it. And then when they begin to accept it, they can start to come forward and gradually take up Krishna consciousness. So there are many things we can do to awaken people's interest in Krishna. But uh, Krishna very clearly has to be in the center. We hear the verse quoted sometime, or the term Yukta Vairagya. Uh, that verse is there. Nirvanda, how does that verse begin? Anasaktasya, yeah, without being attached to this material world. Anasaktasya Vishayam, Yataham Upayanjataha, Nirbandha, Krishna Sambandhe. Yuktam Vairagya Mutchate. This, Srila Prabhupada would quote the Sanskrit and he taught his disciples to do so also because each word, it's very important to understand each word. Otherwise we may not understand the, the topic at all. People speak of Yukta Vairagya as, well, you can just do anything for Krishna. But what's the verse? The verse, first of all, is Anasaktasya Vishayam. That one should not be attached to anything for its own sake. But one should understand its relationship to Krishna, how it can be used for Krishna. And in that consciousness, if one utilizes uh, what is in this world, that is called Yukta Vairagya. It doesn't mean that one can do all kinds of nonsense or even uh, semi-nonsense, Vedic nonsense, like astrology and all this kind. It's Vedic nonsense. It's, it's not Paravid. It's not Krishna. It's, it's focused on this material world. So Vedic nonsense is a bit better than non-Vedic nonsense, but it's nonsense. It becomes non-nonsense or sense if we get Krishna at the end of it. But in and of itself, it's not sense. And if we, even if we be, become the world's greatest astrologer or greatest sitar player or the world's greatest reiki master or whatever it is, it doesn't mean we've made even one step toward Krishna. There's nothing in it intrinsically that brings us to Krishna. For that we have to hear Bhagavad Gita from the devotees. Everything can be used for Krishna, but for Krishna, without the relationship with Krishna, it's just a big zero. So devotees of Krishna, their duty is to understand Krishna as he presents himself in Bhagavad Gita. One word of Bhagavad Gita, properly spoken, can uh, change people's lives and bring them to Krishna. Whereas years and years and lifetimes of anything else will never bring them to Krishna. Unless we introduce, here is Krishna, the Supreme Personality of Godhead. We have to surrender to Him. Unless that is introduced, then no one's ever going to surrender to Krishna. And if they don't surrender to Krishna, then their whole life is spoiled. So... Uh, we may think, yeah, well, we'll introduce people, but we'll bring them up gradually, gradually, gradually on, but, you know, how gradual do you want to be? You know, unless you come to, unless we come to the point of speaking, Krishna is the Supreme Personality of God, and we have to surrender to Him. Then, like I said, then it's European Hindus. It's just like, as I say, in India, 
There are so many people, they're astrologers, Vastu experts, this, that, but they're not becoming Krishna conscious. One has to speak to them about Krishna. And then, uh, even they may be good in Vastu and this and that, but that doesn't necessarily mean that when they hear Bhagavad Gita, they're going to... It's not that because someone's an astrologer, a Vedic astrologer, he's going to be any more inclined to Krishna than someone who's not. Actually, most of these Vedic sciences in India, they're all mixed up with Mayavad and this Reiki in the West also. I saw some books, it's just... <laughs> it's completely horrible. It's, I mean, the, the uh, so-called philosophy that goes along with it is totally voidist. It's, it's disgusting, actually. It's, it's anti-Krishna conscious. So, uh, yeah, at some point we have to introduce Krishna. So why not from the beginning? <laughs> you know, if you can bring people Vastu, Reiki, and gems, and Vedic music, and on and on and on, and then at the end he says, uh, here's Krishna. Well, well not much. Uh, so uh, you wasted all your time. But then, uh, from the beginning, if we tell, here is Krishna. Surrender to Krishna. Here is Bhagavad Gita. The material world is full of suffering. You want to say something that people can relate to? Immediately, much more easily than astrology. Just tell them that this material world is full of suffering. And if they have even one cell of their brain still working in a slightly sane way, they can understand it. Because it should be obvious. Of course, most people, they don't even have half a cell working properly. But there are some people who, uh, actually many people, if we just say to them, look, life's a big struggle, isn't it? And most people say, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> then how to, how to take them beyond it? They think if they can get it, at the end of their day's struggle, if they can get a little sex and a glass of beer, they think, oh, okay, well, okay, it's okay. What else can we do? But we can present. There is more that we can do. We're meant for happiness. We can present this. This is, this is Krishna's bridge preaching. Tell people this material world is suffering and show them that there is a positive alternative. That is uh, a way we can relate to everyone. This was Srila Prabhupada's preaching technique. In this regard, just something heard yesterday morning, I'm going to quote from Srila Prabhupada. His Divine Grace A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada, founder of Acharya Viscon, in 1975 in Mayapur, uh, speaking to assembled devotees from all over the world, said at the end of his morning lecture, we are not going to teach anything which is not spoken by Krishna and which is not supported by Krishna Chaitanya Dev. This is our principle. This is Krishna consciousness movement. Krishna preached Krishna himself. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu preached the same principle. Krishna Stu Bhagavan Swayam. And we are preaching the same thing. We do not preach anything else. We do not manufacture anything. That is not our business. So by the grace of Krishna, by the mercy of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, you all European boys and girls join this movement under my soliciting. I went to your country with this word only. I did not show you any magic. Neither I have any knowledge how to play magic. That is not possible. I simply repeat the same thing, that here is Krishna, the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Here is Krishna Chaitanya Dev, the devotional form of Krishna. You accept them, your life will be successful. This was Srila Prabhupada's preaching technique. And it was successful. It worked, didn't it? So, and this is how he exhorted us to preach. Of course, we may think that, well... You know, Krishna consciousness, it's, uh, it's like, it's not very tangible. Whereas, if we present something material, people can relate to it more easily. Well, that's true. But, Krishna consciousness is what we need. The material, definitely people can relate to it more easily because that's all we know. 
But scientifically speaking, however much material consciousness we give, we end up in material consciousness. Whether it's Vedic material consciousness, non-Vedic material consciousness, Vastu material consciousness, it's all material. So it's a fact. It's not that easy to preach Krishna consciousness. But there's no point in doing anything else. Everything else ends up as a big zero. Zero means going round and round in circles. That's a zero, right? You get a zero. Janma mrityu jaravyadhi punarapi jananam punarapi maranam punarapi janani jatare shayanam Again and again, dying, getting born, makes round and round, makes a big zero. Lots of zeros. Round. How many zeros have we made? How many lifetimes? Millions of millions of zeros. And then come on, punch right through it. Put a one. That is Krishna. So it's not so easy. People, they don't want that. That's true. So it is easier to present something else. And there is scope for that. It's not outside the scope of preaching to present something. Here's something you might be interested in. But the point is we have to bring people to Krishna. Otherwise, it's just a big zero. So only Krishna and Krishna conscious will satisfy us. Yes, Savai Pung Sang Paro Dharma Yato Bhaktir Hokshya Ahaitukiya Prati Hata Yayatma Suprasiddhati. Only this will ultimately satisfy us. Only Krishna can protect us. However much yoga we do, however much Reiki treatment we have, however much uh, antioxidants we take, we have to leave this body, we have to die. However fit and healthy it may be, we have to die, we have to get born again. Krishna will protect us if we become his devotees. Nothing else will protect us. Rake Krishna, Mareke, Mare Krishna, Rakeke. If Krishna wants to protect us, he'll protect us. No one, no one can harm us. And if we're not protected by Krishna, there's nothing we can do to save ourselves. So the whole point is to become dear to Krishna. We should be dear to Krishna by talking of Krishna, serving Krishna, chanting Krishna's names. That should be the focus of our lives. Mridayam adhyam sulabham sudur labham pavan sukalpo guru karnadharam mayanukulena labasvateritam puman bhavadhim nataret saatmaha. Krishna himself says, he gives the analogy, that <coughs> this human body is compared to an excellent boat for crossing the ocean of birth and death. And the guru, Krishna conscious guru, is the capable captain for guiding the boat. He knows how to guide the boat. And Krishna's instructions in the Shastra, that is the favorable wind for blowing the boat in the right direction. So if we get all these facilities and still we don't cross over this birth and death ocean, then we are simply killing ourselves. We're spoiling our lives. So this we should consider. Not to spoil our lives, not to become diverted. To follow the scientific process of Krishna consciousness, which means there are rules and regulations. Just like in the chemical plant, certain things you should do, certain things you should not do. There are many safety regulations, isn't it? No smoking. In the chemical plant, no smoking. So many rules you have to follow. You may not even be allowed in, unless one is properly qualified. So if we follow all, all the regulations properly, under a proper guidance, then we can get the result. Otherwise, if we don't, if we think, let me put ten parts water and one part flour and make bread like that, then it's not going to work. The result will be of no use to anyone. So, Hare Krishna. That's all I wanted to say for now. If anyone has any question, please ask. Yeah. Thank you. Just a question. Uh, 
Do you want to uh, take a mic and say what you're going to say? Please say it in English so I can understand and then in Croatian also. <laughs> Say it in Croatian. Well, in in uh, in one purport, Srila Prabhupada says that the great, the biggest contamination is identification with the body. So, maybe you can. Oh. Yes. Okay, all right, yeah, all right. We find in Bhagavad Gita, Krishna, Arjuna asks Krishna, why do we do bad things? Why do we do bad things? We don't want to do bad things, still we do bad things. Arjuna, Arjuna is replied to by Krishna. Krishna says, it is lust, material desire. So, anartas are unlimited, but they all come into one category. They're all one genre, which means um, material desire, which is the perversion of the desire to serve Krishna. So that is the anartha from which all others, all others are just uh, varied manifestations of that one anartha. Krishna bahimu koya bhogavancha kare nikatastha mayatare japatiya dhari. Becoming inimical to Krishna, uh, Krishna by Moko, then we then we desire material enjoyment, and Maya catches us. That's and there are various manifestations, various anarthas. I spoke about some of the more popular anarthas among our devotees in the Western world today. Fascination with things that are supposed to be or imagined to be related to Krishna. I gave some some Reiki, astrology, this, that. They can be related, but they're not intrinsically related. So, there's a tendency for some devotees to become so fascinated with these things that they forget that the real goal is to Become mad after Krishna. Yeah, please. Yeah, from my side also for the wonderful lecture. Oh, yes. I wonderful. I recently spoke with some uh, uh, older devotees actually on God's brother about this ten tendency in the modern Eastern, that this preach, preach, and mood. And he replied that uh, during the time of Shilaprabhu was physically present, that he said that uh, his realization that everything was very simple because everyone was considered just a counter of Shilaprabhu. And what Shilaprabhu has uh, been saying to do, everybody was practically doing. Now we are trying to invent some new methods and like that. And very often as we hear uh, in this tendency to do some kind of rich preaching, one argument is given, and that is that the people are today much more poor than before. So considering the few modern moments thirty four days ago, I would like to ask you, do you consider that this is really the fact that people today are people are more fallen and therefore we can't preach as we yeah. used to. Well that's what the Indian people said about preaching in the West. They said that Western people can't become devotees because they're too fallen. So, however fallen we may be, our position is that we are eternal servants of Krishna. Right? Actually, we were not qualified people to hear this message. But Srila Prabhupada gave it anyway. And by his mercy, we were able to pick that up. So, bridge pre actually all preaching is bridge preaching because we have to... Preaching means that people are not Krishna conscious. They're on the other side. They're on the other side. And we have to bring them in. 
But if we emphasize too much on the bridge and not on the preaching, then we just end up on the bridge and we don't... Either we go to the other side or we take them halfway across and we both remain in the middle. But the point is to come to this side. So, uh, like I say, anything... I, I'm not against it intrinsically. All these, what they call bridge preaching. But then there should be a very solid Krishna conscious base on the other side. Otherwise, even if you take people in, what, what are you going to bring them to? Astrology, astrology, okay, come in, come in, and you come in and there's only astrology also. So the, if there's a very strong basis of Krishna consciousness, that people can experience Krishna conscious, then we can do anything to bring people to that. So people are too fallen to be Krishna conscious. Uh, Prabhupada didn't accept that. Rather, if if we if we follow the scientific process, we can induce people to do that also. Maybe we have, we we should see from our side that we are not pure. If people are not coming, we shouldn't think that there's something wrong with the process, but that we're not following it properly. The process works. Hare Nama, Hare Nama, Hare Nama, Eva Kevalam, Kalo Nasteva, 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 Gatir Anyata. Because people have fallen in this age, therefore Chaitanya Mahaprabhu has given the very simple process of Hari Nam, no other process. Because people have fallen, this is the process. No other process. Yeah, anything else, please? No, all right, finish then. Yeah. Okay. So thank you. Hare Krishna. All glories to Srila Prabhupada. Hare Krishna. To announce, would you like to announce about these books? I have uh, here some books of mine in Croatian which were not. You want to announce Valent? Who made all these books? I have many books in English and Croatian. CDs. I even have some Hindi CDs here. Any Hindi Balne Wale? No astrology. <laughs>